Hey everybody, today we are going to talk about senior programmers versus junior programmers and if anybody has any Q&A I will answer questions. So let's take a look. Before we begin I'd like to talk about if you haven't already known Udemy has a $10 sale. You can see here, there's me. Uh, the $10 sale is right here. You can get um, any of these courses for $10. I really like Colt Steele's course. The In the description of this video, I have a link for the $10 coupon, so definitely check that out. And uh, you just click on my link, it's an affiliate link, and you'll get $10 off, but check that out. So going back to my original premise, we're gonna talk about senior programmers versus junior programmers and what makes you a senior programmer and what makes you a junior programmer. So let me start with talking about uh, this really great article I found about this. So I'm gonna switch screens again. You can see here on the screen, this is the problem of defining a senior developer. And what it says is that a lot of times when people think of a senior developer, they think of years of experience. Um, they may think of like if, the, if you're really good at one different programming language, then you're considered senior. Uh, if you've authored a technical book or you're really good at creating algorithms on a whiteboard, you might be considered a senior programmer. And uh, if you write an open source library, you might be considered a senior developer. But really, there is no definition of what a senior programmer is and isn't. So it's really hard for people to come up with a good definition and metrics of how we judge who is a senior developer. I mean, Chris Hawks mentioned a video a couple of weeks ago where he was talking about a senior developer it could be just somebody that negotiated really well during the process of, of, of becoming a, a programmer. They were able to negotiate during their job search and where, where they, when they got hired. So it's really up in the air what a senior programmer is. But I really like this article, and this is on the frontside.io uh, website here. Let me see if I can add this to, let me see if I can add this to the chat. Hey, what's up, Joshua? There's the link, I added it to the chat. And by the way, if you're in the chat, please let me know where you're chatting from, like where you guys are from. That'd be really cool to know. So, um, as I was saying, the it's really hard to define what a senior programmer is, but one thing they try to do in this blog article is to talk about um, a couple of different things. Because just because you are cons just because you have a lot of ex experience doesn't necessarily make you a senior developer. And there's usually three things that can make you a, a senior developer. And they talk about, I'll scroll down here to show you, the conjoined triangle. Oops. So first, obviously, as your proficiency, um, you get better at your job, you need less direction. And that's one way that they talk about um, being a senior developer. If you're just starting out, you usually need a lot more help. And if you're not asking for help, you should be asking for help, especially if you got hired on as a junior role. You should be constantly asking questions. You should be trying to own up and try to figure things out yourself, but you do need direction and they should expect you to, to ask questions. I actually was in a, an internship once and uh, the internship was pretty uh, loose and they didn't actually tell me what to do. Um, so a lot of it, I had to make up a lot of my work and, and the stuff I was turning in, and I wasn't really giving many resources to ask for help on. And I think it was actually discouraged if I asked the senior developers or the, the mid-level developers at the organization for help. And that actually negatively affected my internship. It actually didn't quite work out. And if I would have been in an organization that kind of prides itself on teaching people and bringing things up, bringing people up, I think that would have been a lot better. Uh, nevertheless, that is one way that they were talking about how much direction, but I like this kind of Venn diagram here I'm putting up on the screen, 
where we have three these three concentric circles and where you meet in the middle is sort of a, a senior developer. So you have this connectiveness, the technical capability and leadership. So the connectiveness is like how how involved you are with the open source community, how you're doing with mentorships. Um, hey Dave, hey Josh. Uh, empathetic development, courageous honesty. You have technical abilities. So we're talking about so this is kind of what everybody traditionally thinks about what a senior developer is, like how well they are at, at uh, actual languages and technologies, how curious they are. And then there's also this kind of leadership aspect. So it doesn't mean you're necessarily a manager, but obviously that helps, but having an owner's mindset. So when you're given a project, you're not just there to do your small little tiny part and then it, get, it gets moved on to someone else that you're actually taking some ownership and responsibility. You're kind of having um, what the bigger picture is on a product that you need to do your best on. So you kind of take that leadership role. I, I used to work at a place too where when I worked there, people, um, I used to say, well, what happens when this product leaves this group? And they're like, not our problem. We don't care, you know? Who cares what happens when it goes to this other group? And I'm like, well, you know, the work that we do is going to affect everything down the chain here. You know, if we do a crappy job, you know, they're going to have problems on that end. When it gets to the customer, they're going to have problems and they come back to us. And their idea was like, well, that's not your job. And I definitely always thought that was weird and, and something that you shouldn't think. I mean, you should have pride in what you do. You should take ownership of everything you work on and you should have kind of an idea of the bigger picture of where you're working at. So I really like this idea of a senior developer is not just someone who has the the best technical chops in the shop that is quote unquote architect, but also someone that has this really, really close connectiveness with the either like an OSS community, they're empathetic developers. One of the big things about connectiveness is that you're not just, so you're, so you're probably thinking, well, yeah, you could be really good um, connector. You can be going to meetup groups. You can be doing all this. You can be writing open source plugins, but how does that affect your day-to-day -day job? But I think what they're trying to go for here is that someone that's really connected has a lot of empathy, and that empathy shows in the work that you do every day. So if you're a very empathetic person, you're going to be willing to help those others around you. You're going to have empathy for the customer and and and, and understand what they're, where they are. You're going to put yourself in their shoes so that way the product that and the programs that you create are going to be very um, high quality and then if you're lifting everybody else up by helping other people out then that will make a, a stronger team and um, considered if you were just really really good at your technical abilities then you may just have this kind of lone wolf uh, persona out there where you're just um, you're just working by yourself in your little bubble and you're never um, helping other people out and that's actually pretty detriment from from a team standpoint because you need to work with other people and you guys have to have one focus and one mission and you have to be able to ship product not just how to create the product so you really kind of need a little bit of all three of these kind of areas to be a senior developer and that's kind of what I see and you could come into a job where you you used to be a leader at your previous job and you were really connected but you don't have the technical capabilities and you could still be kind of considered a senior developer you may because you have these kind of two out of the three of these uh of these circles that make you more of a senior developer so i, I really like this definition beyond just how many years of experience you are i mean i've seen developers that have 10 years of experience but it's really like they have 10 one year of experience they're kind of just repeating the same stuff they did the first year over and over again and I, I think the whiteboarding interview, kind of how you think and how you work through problems is great for your technical abilities, but it doesn't necessarily show how you're gonna do in a real day-to-day -day environment, how you're gonna work with other people and how empathetic you're gonna be, how you're gonna take ownership on on projects that you're given, how fast you ship. So I, I think kind of keeping in mind all three, three things is important. Now, that's not to say that if you have no technical cap capability and that you're just coming out of college or someplace like that, that you're going to be able to, or if you just came out of a boot camp or you're just self-teaching, that you're going to be able to get a job because you have high connectedness and high leadership. I think there's still a minimum bar most places are going to look for in your technical capability before you're going to get a job there. But just keep in mind these, these three different circles 
Um, looks like we got people from Colombia, Philippines, Denver, Serbia. Thank you for joining. Uh, so that's what I have to say about senior developer versus regular developers or junior developers. Um, you want to, as a junior developer, try to kind of strive to to work on not just your technical capabilities, but trying to keep this this leadership. Even if you're not interested in being a manager or anything, but just try to keep all these things in mind. Now, of course, this also depends on the workplace that you're at. Some places are very, very streamlined and you only have one thing that you need to work on and you are not allowed to have anything else, anything of these other things. Like, let's say you work for a government contractor. I mean, obviously you're not gonna have much connectiveness. Maybe if you work at Apple and you're working at a product that's very private, so you're, you're not, not all workplaces are gonna be open to all three, three, three things. But I think a good workplace can have all these three things. And I think even if they don't, you could try to work this into your everyday. Uh, hey, what's up, Ryan? My buddy Ryan Hunt is in the house. Uh, so definitely all these three things are important. So I have one other thing to talk about. And if you guys have any questions, just throw them out in the live chat window you see here. And thank you from Austria, awesome. Thanks for joining, Armin. And Nevsky. And you know, last time I did this, everybody was asking me why I keep looking to the right, because I have dual monitors and I my chat window's on the right side. So I wanna talk a little bit about Vue. Um, I had another question the other day. Someone was asking me what, they, what I thought about Vue, and I definitely like Vue. It's, uh, as it says here on the screen, it's a progressive JavaScript framework. I've been using it for quite a while. It's approachable, versatile, performant. Um, it's, so it's basically, you can, it has a router, but you can use it primarily for your UI components, for your UI. It feels a lot like starting with React. Um, if it's really simple syntax, it uses something called directives. You can kind of see here in the guide. I'll make it a little bigger. You can kind of see here, you have components, which is a very important part. You can kind of put things together. It has this really simple uh, template syntax, uh, uses interpolation, so the double mustaches, uh, double curly braces. And you can definitely have a raw HTML and then has these things here. This is a VHTML directive, so you can bind. It has two-way data binding by default, which is really cool. So if, I, if you're a new programmer and you're looking for uh, a new JavaScript framework and you've heard a lot about React and Angular and Ember and you just want something really simple to start with, I would definitely look highly at Vue.js. In fact, I am in the process of writing a book on Vue. Um, I'm gonna definitely have a more of an announcement video on that later, but I am in the process of looking at writing a, a Vue book, which was really cool because I've, I've written one on Ember.js, but Vue is, is doing good. It may, hey lad, will it make my parents love me? Maybe, I don't know, it could. <laughs> so funny stuff there. So Dave, I see a question here in the chat. I'm in a boot camp, and that will be teaching React. Will picking up Vue after learning React be pretty easy? Absolutely. So after you learn one of these frameworks, I mean React is great. Um, one thing you're gonna like about React too is going to React to Vue will be really simple. It, it's very similar in some ways. Um, also, the something React has something called Redux, and Vue um, has its own Vuex which is makes it really simple to do uh, data stuff with it. Let me see if it's on here, Vuex. Uh, I'll have to find it, Vuex. So here it is, centralized state management. So if you're using, if you're familiar with Redux, you'll be able to go to Vuex pretty quickly. And it, uh, yeah, definitely for sure looking into that is is really important here. So anyways, yeah, definitely view. Uh, I would highly take a look at it. I mean, of course, if you are really into one framework already, you're really in deep with React. I mean, this is, uh, don't get 
too caught up in the flavor of the week, the framework or library of the week that's out there. You want to be able to stick with one for a long period of time, but just realize that that if you're starting off with and you have to pick one, this is definitely a good idea to switch over and and start learning these other ones. Uh, View being one of them. All right. Well, I think I'm gonna get going here unless we have any more questions. I appreciate everybody on the live stream today. Um, if you like this, please click that like button. That really helps me out and subscribe. I'm going to start doing these live Q and A's and live, just kind of me talking about different topics, probably once a week, uh, probably Thursdays or Fridays, just trying to get used to talking in front of the camera and, and talking about different topics. So I'm trying to get better. If you have a, like a question that you have in mind, um, if you have a question in mind, you can certainly tweet me. I'm at ericch, E-R-I-K-C-H, and I'll try to get in on the next live. I'm a full-time uh, developer, so I have a lot of experience in web development and in Java too. So I actually might even answer some Java questions if you're interested in anything like that. So thanks everybody for watching. Take care. See ya later. Bye.